The most common type of preferences used in microeconomics are Cobb-Douglas preferences. Cobb-Douglas preferences are any preferences that can be described by a Cobb-Douglas utility function, which has the following form. u of x1 and x2 is equal to x1 raised to some constant a times x2 raised to some constant b. We say that the Cobb-Douglas utility function is normalized if the exponents sum to 1, that is, if a plus b is equal to 1. For example, if a is equal to 1 half and b is equal to 1 half and u is equal to the square root of x1 times x2, then u is a normalized Cobb-Douglas utility function. Let's have a closer look at the Cobb-Douglas utility function u of x1 comma x2 is equal to x1 raised to some constant a times x2 to the b. And let's see what Cobb-Douglas preferences look like. Specifically, I want to draw in difference curves from this utility function. First of all, I want to restrict these constants to a being strictly greater than zero and being strictly greater than zero. Let's see why. If, for example, a is equal to zero, then x1 to the zero is just one. So x1 will then go away from the utility function. That means that my level of utility will be the same no matter what x1 is, which means that x1 will then be a neutral good. I want to exclude that possibility in this lecture and look at only cases when both goods are desired. If a is negative, say minus 1, then here you have something like x1 raised to minus 1. If you raise a number to minus 1, the result will become smaller the bigger the value of x1, which would mean that utility was decreasing when you increase x1. So if a is less than 0, then x1 is actually a bad. And I want to exclude this as well. Same argument goes for b, so this is why I want to restrict a and b to be both strictly positive. That will guarantee a strict increase in u when either x1 or x2 increases, making both goods desired. So let's have a look at an indifference curve for this utility function. An indifference curve is a level curve of this equation, so I need to set this equal to some number u0. In order to draw this indifference curve, we make this implicit relationship between x1 and x2 explicit in x2. And this will always be possible for a Cobb-Douglas utility function when both a and b are strictly positive. I divide both sides by x1 to the a, that will give me x2 to the b is u0 divided by x1 to the a. Then I raise both sides to 1 over b. I have x2 to the b. I raise this to 1 over b. I can do 1 over b since b is strictly positive. That is u0 over x1 to the a raised to 1 over b. On the left hand side, I then have x2 raised to b times 1 over b, which is 1, so x2. On the right hand side, I have u0 raised to 1 over b divided by x1 a over b. u0 raised to 1 over b, well, this is some constant. It doesn't really matter which constant it is. Different constants will just give me different indifference curve. So I can write this as some constant divided by x1 a over b. And keep in mind here that a over b is also strictly positive since both are. Alternatively, I can write this as c times x1 minus a over b. So given a utility function x1 to the a times x2 to the b, my indifference curves will all be the graph of a power function. x2 will be a function of x1 and it will be given by some constant c, which is determined from the level of utility. Different values of c will give us different indifference curves, multiplied by x1 raised to negative a over b. This is a power function 
with exponent a over b, the ratio of the exponents of the utility function. And the exponent is always negative. It's a well-known fact from mathematics that power functions with the negative exponent is always strictly decreasing and they are always convex. Let's have a look at some example. Let's make c equal to one and let's try one for both exponents. a is equal to one and b is equal to one. We can plot an indifference curve by just typing plot. And in this case, we plot x2 as a function of x1. We need to pick a range. Let's say that x1 goes from 0 to 5, for example, and that will give us a nice indifference curve. You can see that it's strictly decreasing and convex. Changing the value of c will just give me a different indifference curve. For example, if I do four, I will get an indifference curve associated with a higher level of utility, which will be further out to the right. And we can see that by replotting our graph. You can see that the values on the X2 axis is larger. So this new indifference curve is strictly above the indifference curve when C was equal to one. As long as I pick my A and B to be strictly positive, minus a over b will be strictly negative and the indifference curve will be strictly decreasing and convex. So here I've changed a to two, I replot it and we have a different shape of the indifference curve, but it's still decreasing and convex. Of course, if I set this back to one, then this indifference curve is the same as a level curve of my utility function. If I do a contour plot of my utility function, I let x1 go from 0 to 5, x2 from 0 to 5, and I just do one contour, the one where utility is equal to 1, then I will get exactly the same graph. If you suspect that they are different, they are actually not, since the origin of the second graph is slightly down to the left.